Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on our webinar about high torque bolting on industrial applications in the mining industry. High torque uh, has been in business for over uh, 50 years, and uh, we, we specialize in large fasteners and large bolting. And obviously, the mining industry itself uh, has a lot of applications that are very, very uh, um, uh, significantly large in size and, and bring us a lot of opportunities for ways to help you. We'd like to talk a little bit about the company, a little bit about our experiences, our technology, and then some of the applications that we've been utilizing in the mining industry. Uh, we hope that you'll learn enough from this to possibly reach out to us and see if you can implement some of our innovations to help you get your bolting work done in a more efficient, safe, and uh, more reliable manner. A little bit about high torque. Our mission statement is, as you can see on the slide here, uh, our mission statement is to optimize safety, quality, and schedule in industrial bolting through innovative solutions and an unyielding commitment to customer satisfaction. Uh, this statement um, really embodies what we want to do for you and how we feel we can help you in the industry. Uh, we've been going about um, supporting customers in, in, in pretty much every industry where industrial bolting is required. Uh, mining is no different. And we really like to make sure that you're in a position to, to uh, allow us to give you an opportunity to take advantage of some of our, 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 our technology. Um, an overview of the company. Uh, we've been in, uh, in business for over 50 years. Uh, and we've been continuously innovating and making, making bolting safer and easier to perform. We're headquartered in Mawa, New Jersey, um, but we're an international organization. We have, we have over 500 dedicated sales representatives worldwide. Uh, we've got mobile van technicians with repair and calibration facilities uh, that travel throughout the United States and throughout the world. Uh, we do sell and rent tooling. Uh, many people aren't aware of this, but with our tooling rentals, um, we have some really terrific programs uh, where you can uh, rent to own. This has worked out very good for a lot of customers that actually want to try some new technology. Essentially, what we'll allow you to do is rent our tooling uh, for a period of time, and then you can apply the rental credits for the cost that you incurred towards the purchase of the tooling that you rented or any other tooling we have. And so that's a really uh, significant uh, program that we offer that really makes it easy for you to actually try our hardware, try our, 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 our equipment, and make sure it's right before you before you make a commitment to owning it. Um, you can see we have a map here. I mean, we literally have uh, locations and, and offices on, on every single continent and, 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 and almost every country. Um, if you're not in the U.S. and you want to reach out to us, you can go to us through our website at uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put somebody in touch with you right away. That's an, you know, that's an international um, headquarters for our company, and it's very easy to get in touch with us, and we'll get somebody out to see you right away, no matter what corner of the world you're in. Just to give you a little overview of what we want to talk about today, uh, essentially, um, you know, the mining industry has a lot of lot of large bolting applications, and uh, there are a lot of options that are available from high torque that we just want to make you aware of. Um, we'll uh, we'll bring you up to speed on all of our tooling options standard tooling options for, for working on standard nuts and bolts, uh, hydraulic, pneumatic, uh, battery, but we'll also um, take the time to share with you some of our new innovations, uh, one of the most important one being our self-reacting technology and the benefits of that. Self-reacting uh, technology is a way we have of getting, removing the need for reaction arms on, on hydraulic and pneumatic and electric torque tools, and it makes it much safer, uh, improves the quality and, and, and also the productivity of work. Um, we'll also go through some general applications of the tooling uh, and the self reacting fasteners in the mining industry. We'll show you some examples. And then we'll finish it up with a Q&A session uh, with remaining time. And uh, any of the questions that we're not able to get today, we will, we will uh, if you submit them online here, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get to the balance of them uh, and we'll respond by email over the next couple of days. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. Uh, our local reps you know, are all over the world, and you can come right to our website and, uh, and also post questions, uh, and we'll get back in touch with you right away. As far as mining equipment, um, one of the things that's, that's always been apparent to us, and, 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 and the reason it's been an interesting industry to us, 
is that there is a lot of very large equipment in this industry. And large equipment, by its nature, means you have large nuts and bolts. And uh, when you have large nuts and bolts, you do need special tooling for loading and unloading these, these fasteners. Uh, the size and, and weight of, of some of the mining equipment uh, really necessitates something special. Normally, it's going to be a hydraulic torque tool. Um, we, we actually stock hydraulic torque tools up to 130,000 foot-pounds. So we can impart uh, you know, enormous levels of torque, precise torque, uh, for unloading and unloading bolts. And we have this stuff in stock. We, we, we realize that our customers don't always so much want our equipment. They actually need it, and they need it now. So we do have a lot of inventory stocked uh, around the world. So if you're in need of something special, something large, Please don't hesitate to come to our website, pick up the phone and call us directly. We probably have what you need on the shelf um, when it comes to large bolts. Uh, I don't think anybody in the world comes close to the amount of stock that we, we actually carry. At, and also, we have it um, you know, situated in offices and distribution centers literally all over the, all over the world. Some of the uh, tooling lines that you'd want to be aware of if you're doing some large bolting. Uh, this is uh, this slide here kind of shows you some of the very, very common things that we offer right now uh, and that are, that are um, essentially industry, industry standards. Uh, this is the latest and greatest tools. Uh, we do have some older model tools. We've been in the business for 50 years. We still support the older model tools, um, but there's a lot of benefits that you can, you can, uh, you can gain from updating to the, to the latest model tools. Uh, as far as safety, convenience, and quality. And uh, we always want to make sure you're aware of them. We think it's uh, a, a good move to, to migrate to the latest tools if you want to take advantage of those benefits. And we're going to talk a lot about those benefits as we move through the slideshow. Um, but just to give you an idea, if you look at the bottom tool on the right, that's, that's our ICE tool. That's a hydraulic square drive tool. Um, very, very common tool. Uh, you can use it with a reaction arm. You can use it with special self-reacting fasteners. Uh, it's got a square drive, so that means you can put any size socket on it, any appropriately sized socket. That happens to be a picture of a 3,000 foot-pound tool. Um, occasionally, you'll run into applications where you just don't have the height uh, clearance to work with. And in those cases, you'll use a link-style tool like you see there uh, with the purple stripe on it. That's our Stealth 2. Uh, the Stealth tools are essentially low-clearance tools. They are uh, about um, maybe a third of the height of a, of a conventional hex drive or square drive tool and they don't require a socket. So when you have height constraints, these are very nice tools to use. Uh, as, uh, as, as we evolve, uh, things uh, have changed a lot over the years, and we've gotten to the point now where, where battery tools and electric tools are becoming more and more common for industrial bolting. I mean, historically, they were too large for batteries, these large bolts, but the battery technology has come a long way. And you can see uh, that this gray tool here, it's called our called our lithium gun. That is a 36-volt lithium-ion uh, battery gun. Uh, the 36-volt battery has tremendous capacity. We have these guns in, in several different sizes from 250 foot-pounds. Uh, we have a 700-foot-pound, a 1,000-foot-pound, a 2,000-foot-pound, and a 3,000-foot-pound battery gun. And all those guns can operate from that max reading of uh, uh, 3,000 foot-pounds uh, uh, to about 20%, maybe even a little less of that max capacity. So you can set them at any torque you'd like. Um, and with the 36 volt lithium ion battery, in some cases you can do several hundred volts with these tools before the battery needs to be replaced. So they've gotten a, a whole new uh, life in, in industrial bolting battery tools. Um, you know, torque multiplied battery tools just didn't have the capacity years ago. And it seems that in the last few years, the battery capacity has really allowed us to do, do some things that are changing the way bolting is done. When you're working on remote equipment, when you're at elevation, when you're climbing, it really makes a lot of sense to consider the use of a 36-volt lion gun or a 36-volt lithium ion gun um, as, as, uh, as, as a true industrial bolting tool. Alternatively, when you're doing shop work, sometimes you don't want to deal with batteries, uh, recharging, and, and, and so forth. Um, pneumatic tools are also uh, a, a great alternative. We've had them for over a decade. Uh, they're very, very common tools in the marketplace. Uh, you can see on the on the bottom right hand side that's a typical square drive pneumatic tool that is used in the uh, industrial bolting. We have them up to 8,000 foot pounds of output force, uh, and uh, and they'll, they'll, there's even models down to 250 foot pounds for for the lower end applications. 
We've also made some major innovations with our pumping systems. You can see up on the right hand side, that's a, that's a, a model and, and a picture of our, our user interface for our, our new pumps. That's called our vector pump. Pumps have come a long way. I mean, the pumps are the heart and soul of hydraulic tools. You can't operate the tool without operating the pump. And what we've, what we've done is we've, we've brought a lot of uh, digital electronics to the pumps, allowing us to control the tools in a much more intuitive and much more simple manner. Uh, in the old days, you had to set pressure with relief valve to make sure the torque was set right in the tools. With these pumps, you literally just, uh, you just key in the actual torque value into the pendant, and you no longer have to set a valve. Uh, you can also select the torque tools uh, from the actual menu inside these uh, pumps, which means you no longer need a torque chart. If you know you're using an ICE 3 or a stealth tool, you pick the ICE 3 or the stealth tool, and the torque chart's already loaded. So you can literally work in terms of, of, of uh, torque instead of converting pressures to torques. Uh, it really takes a lot of the ambiguity and confusion out of setting up uh, tooling and, uh, and getting work started. The other big innovation that we have, and we really like to emphasize this in this in this presentation, is the is the migration from from reaction arms to self-reacting fasteners. Uh, in the last few years, High Torque has really uh, improved our ability to offer self-reacting fasteners. So we've done self-reacting fasteners for many years, and self-reacting fasteners allow you to remove the reaction arm that is typical to a hydraulic torque tool. Um, we've done them with the high torque nut, we've done them with smart studs, we've done them with special washers called a load disc. But in the last few years, we had a really great innovation. And uh, this innovation, uh, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, there's two washers down there. This allows us to remove the reaction arm from any bolting application, uh, and we can do it at a very, very low cost. So I always like to make sure people understand what the reaction arm is and why we want to remove it. Uh, this is... Um, not something that's always intuitive to, to, the, to everyone in the bolting industry. Um, we've been doing it for a long time. But essentially, um, hydraulic torque tools are an alternative to what would be a very impractical wrenching situation. When you ask someone to put a lot, large amount of torque on something, let's just say you ask them to put 4,000 foot-pounds on something, um, they have you know, two, two options. <laughs> you know, they can get a very, very long, long wrench and pull on it, or they can get a hydraulic torque tool. And uh, a hydraulic torque tool is basically, uh, in many regards, a replacement for an, an obscenely or ridiculously long wrench. Uh, you can put 4,000 foot pounds on something with a 40 foot wrench pretty easily, but it's very inconvenient to work with a 40 foot wrench. So what hydraulic torque tools are, are very short wrenches that are being acted on instead of by pulling on the end of it with, a, with manual power. Um, what we do is we use a very short wrench and we use hydraulic power. You can see on these pictures below, just to give you a flavor of what I'm trying to describe, essentially a hydraulic torque tool can be modeled, uh, if you just did a free body diagram, of, of, as essentially a very, very short wrench with hydraulic jack pushing on it. That's what a hydraulic torque tool does for you. And that's a terrific thing because you don't need a really, really long wrench. Um, but the one thing is if you're going to push on a very, very short wrench with a hydraulic jack, hydraulic piston, you basically need something to push off of. Right? and that is in the form of a reaction arm. So all hydraulic torque tools work like this, and you can see the reaction foot, that yellow portion of the tool. When you load these tools up and when you pressurize them, what's going to happen is the tool is going to start to rotate, and it's going to find a place to push off of, just like the jack is. And that's essentially how hydraulic torque tools solve the problem of not needing very, very large wrenches. We use a short wrench with a lot of force on it. That does pose some risk. Okay, the risk is if you ever put your finger in between the reaction arm and the application where it's pushing off of, you will have a catastrophic injury. And so after doing this for 50 years, we've really wanted to find ways to get rid of this, this, this inherent safety risk. And you think about how these tools operate. They're a jack pushing on a short wrench. They're very good at it. They're very efficient at it. They go back and forth. The pump does all the actuating and, and retracting, and it happens so quickly that it's possible to make a mistake and, and actually put your hand in the wrong place. And if you do this for as long as we have, it will happen on occasion. And we want to remove that potential altogether. Uh, you can see in the picture on the upper hand right here, upper hand right side, uh, you got, a, you got a, a typical reaction arm set up, right? This is a hydraulic tool pushing on a fastener. Uh, and uh, 
it's probably a 3,000 foot pound tool. So there's a man with a with a, what we call an alco arm, which is a reaction arm, pushing off the hub of that wheel. And essentially, if he were to try and create the amount of torque those hydraulics are going to create, he would have to probably have to put somewhere on the order of a thousand pounds of force on that wrench. He's just not strong enough to do that. Nobody is. So the hydraulics do it for him. But with that, with that said, he has to be very careful. If he happens to put his hand in between that wrench and the hub, there's a thousand pounds of force there pushing on him. And so one of our goals is to try and find ways to allow the engineers of this world to remove this safety risk. And we've got a good step on that, and we're going to talk about that quite a bit here because it really is, um, it really does have a lot of relevance in the mining industry. Okay, how do we get rid of the reaction washer? Well, uh, it's, I'm sorry, how do we get rid of the reaction arm? And you can see the arm there on the bottom. It's actually quite simple, and uh, we, we really, um, you know, it's, as simple as it is, we do have some patents on the technology, and it's not as trivial as it might look on the surface. If it were, we would have invented it many years ago. But to distill it down to its most simple elements, really what we've discovered at High Torque is that washers are good reaction points. Washers have a tendency to stay still when you tighten a bolt. And you can see on this, this picture here, you have a wrench, uh, and if you were to pull on that wrench and turn that nut, you could watch the washer. Uh, the washer would not likely turn. In fact, even if it were to turn, it would want to turn with the nut. So we thought, well, why can't we react on the washer to turn the nut? as opposed to reacting on something external. And ultimately, it turned out that that's actually very possible, and essentially, it allowed us to offer a very, very low-cost reaction member, a low-cost uh, faster that allows you to completely remove the need for a reaction arm. On the next slide here, you can see our, our two different washers that we have, and we basically call it a washer system, and it's, 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 a, it's a bolting system from High Torque. Uh, just to make it clear so you understand exactly what we have, we've broken up into two pieces. You've got the reaction washer, which is a top washer, okay? And the reaction washer is the washer that replaces the need for a reaction arm. Instead of reacting on some adjacent structure, you're going to react on the washer right under the nut. You simply put that washer with that star-shaped pattern underneath the nut, and the tool or the reaction feature on that tool will rotationally couple with that, with that flower or star-shaped pattern and essentially turn the nut by reacting on the washer with no need for any external uh, reaction arm. And therefore, it's very, very safe and very, very convenient. There's always a place for a washer. There isn't always a good place to react. You can see on the picture on the, on the bottom right-hand side here, that's, that's a strut. On a, I believe that's on a haul truck. And uh, they're basically reacting on the washer and turning, uh, and, and, and turning the nut uh, with that sleeve socket. And essentially, they have no risk of pinching their fingers. And in, in this case, it's a really good thing that they could work that way because there really isn't a lot of good places to react in there. There's a lot of uh, complex features and shapes where you might be able to react on them, but you wouldn't be able to react on them without scratching paint and dinging things up and, and, and really just really having a less than ideal situation. Um, but to kind of to kind of sweeten the deal a little bit, and this was a discovery we had along with the invention of the reaction washer, we also realize that we actually can get rid of the need for backup wrenches. And backup wrenches are almost more dangerous than, than actual reaction arms, uh, largely because a lot of people don't realize how much torque gets wound up under the backup wrench. And oftentimes they forget they got a backup wrench in place and it has a tendency to fall off and, uh, and, and bounce around and, and become a projectile. Uh, so reaction, uh, I'm sorry, backup wrenches are typically more of a concern for safety than actually the reaction washer side. Um, both are, uh, you know, pretty catastrophic if you if you if you uh, if you don't handle them correctly, and so it's always great to be uh, important to be really careful. Um, but the backup washer solution we come up with removes the need for a backup wrench altogether, and um, it's quite simple. Uh, if you see on the uh, bottom left hand side, you see an operator with a backup wrench. That's a pretty typical scenario. I mean, obviously that man's not going to hold that wrench with that 5,000 foot pound tool on the opposite side of the nut. But essentially, um, what he would do is he'd bear it up against the adjacent bolt or some adjacent structure, and when he torqued the top nut, the backup, the backup wrench would prevent the back nut from turning and therefore it allow everything to get tight. Uh, backup wrenches are clearly big and heavy and, and, and have, have, have a lot of drawbacks. What we've learned is we can take that backup washer you see in this picture, uh, and it's essentially just a, an F436 washer material, but it's knurled on both sides, top and bottom. And it, 
provides enough friction for the back nut so that you no longer have to worry about putting a backup wrench on that side. It's a tremendous safety advantage, and it's a very, very inexpensive, low-cost uh, piece of hardware. You know, obviously, uh, you know, anywhere that a backup, uh, any, anywhere that a double nut situation, or even you can see on these struts, those are actually, on the right-hand side, those are actually bolt heads on the back side. And what we have on the back side there is a backup washer underneath the bolt head, and then we got a reaction washer under the nut. And therefore, an operator can tighten them without even worrying about the nut on the, or the, the bolt head on the opposite side. It's not going to move. The backup washer keeps it from moving. So these are two simple, simple additions. Uh, we really like to make sure that people that do industrial bolting understand and know about these and, and, and bring us uh, into the discussion if they want to take advantage of them. Obviously, uh, it's not always that easy for the craft or the maintenance who are doing field work in the mines or dealers to install this hardware, so we do like to make sure we introduce it to the OEMs. Uh, we do work with a lot of different OEMs, and we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that these safety benefits are realized and brought into the fold at some point, at least where they're appropriate. Uh, we're making any every option possible. Uh, and so, um, you know, as you're doing field work, though, you know, oftentimes equipment... Um, you know, if you're having specific challenges on it, if you bring them to our attention, we might be able to help you optimize this stuff without, without, you know, without doing anything more than adding a simple washer. So please bring us into the fold and let us, let us take a look at your applications. Just to give you a little bit more background on how these washers work. Um, so if you look on the left-hand side here, this is uh, just to compare and contrast the, uh, the high torque washer for setup versus the typical reaction arm setup. On the left-hand side, you have a conventional setup with a reaction arm and a backup wrench. And you can see that there are some, there are some undesirable things happening in that photo. Um, essentially, when you're torquing a nut and you're acting on a, a, a nut or you're acting on an adjacent piece of hardware, you're going to impart some side loads. Those side loads um, are kind of invisible to the operator, but the bolt and nut do, feel, do experience the stress from them. If you're going to push on that bolt, let's just say that bolt there is getting what's called a thousand foot pounds and you're reacting at three inches away, you're basically getting 4,000 pounds of side load onto the bolt and onto the nut while you try and turn it. And that obviously introduces some, some bending stress to the bolt. Normally you won't see them, but the bolt is experiencing them. And this picture exaggerates a little bit, but you can actually see the bolt's actually leaning a little bit as that reaction arm tries to turn it. And then the backup wrench is doing the exact same thing as it reacts on adjacent bolt. It's preventing the backup nut from turning, which it needs to do so you can create the load, but it's also imparting a side load on it, pushing the bolt in the opposite direction. So when you load up uh, hardware with conventional reaction arms, uh, it's been being, being done that way for decades, like I said. Um, there's really uh, nothing catastrophically wrong about, about what happens when you do that. But there are some real negative things that can be eliminated with these simple washer systems. And those, those simple uh, changes also bring other benefits in, in, you know, when it comes to safety and it comes to convenience. So with the high torque washer setup, uh, you can see that, that you basically, what we did is we we're just highlighting in the color, we put a uh, backup washer on the bottom. And so you can see we made an orange and on the top we put a, a reaction washer. Those are just the two washers you can see over on, in, the, in the red pan on the left-hand side of the slide. The top washer is the, the, is the reaction washer with the star-shaped uh, flower pattern on the outside. What we're going to do is we're going to rotationally couple the tool with the outside of that washer because washers don't move, the tool will move, and then we're going to turn the nut. So we're basically turning the nut, reacting on the washer. Simple as can be, um, but, but it works very, very well. And if you put a simple backup washer on the back side, underneath the back nut, you no longer need to worry about a backup wrench there either. The next slide here, you can just see some of the uh, some of the, the quality and safety benefits. Uh, when you do it this way, obviously removing the side load is nice because it removes some of the stresses and the chances of nut galling and, uh, and and bearing face galling. But also, if you're not pushing off an adjacent fastener, you can't get your finger stuck between there, and that goes for both sides, top and bottom. So the simple uh, washer addition really improves the whole entire bolting situation. It makes it safer and improves the quality of the joint that you're, that, that you're trying to load up with the hydraulic tools. 
what we do uh, for these tools, uh, it's, it's actually quite simple. In order to in order to use our hydraulic torque tools, battery tools, pneumatic tools on the hydraulic washer system, we have a simple sleeve socket assembly. This is essentially for any of the tools that Hytorque makes that have a square drive output. You literally just need a special socket assembly to react on the washer. Normally, you'd have a socket assembly and a reaction arm, but when you're using the Hytorque washer, you don't need a reaction arm. So what you get is a sleeved assembly. The outer sleeve, rather than being a reaction arm, actually wraps around the socket and rotationally couples itself with features on the bottom to the washer. Since the washer doesn't move, the tool doesn't move, it works as a great reaction point. And then we turn the nut with the hex socket like you would any other fastener, the square drive socket, um, while reacting on the, on the actual washer. And so it's very simple. You, you may own these tools already. Uh, essentially, if you have a square drive tool with a spline output, uh, you can definitely buy these sockets for it. If you own any of the battery guns or pneumatic tools that we've ever manufactured, they all have a coaxial spline output, so you can use these sockets in those situations with, uh, with really no additional setup. I mean, you just need to have the washers, and you need to buy a special socket for it. We stock them for every size faster you can imagine. In the, in the mining industry, you typically see things from... Uh, from three quarters of an inch, probably up to two and a half inches, um, not too much over two and a half. We do bump into some stuff, and we've done done some larger uh, drag line fasteners and such up to up to four or five inches, um, and and even larger if needed. So there's certainly a lot of options to get larger, but we, we do stock all this equipment, and so you simply purchase a couple washers and a driver, and you're ready to go. With the washers, uh, everybody always wants to know, well, how do I know if I can put these on there? Um, and uh, one of the main constraints is typically the material constraint. What are they made of? Uh, and uh, actually, this is, this is quite, quite simple for, for high torque uh, to conform to what the industry uh, accepts right now. Um, uh, unfortunately, washer specs themselves are pretty lean. Uh, the most common washer spec that we come across is the ASTM F436. What we've done is we've made these washers, the material of these washers, to match the requirements of F436. Um, we've also enhanced them a little bit. So F436 has has very lean requirements. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a condition and a chemistry requirement, but they're quite broad. Um, what we do is we nail down exactly how we want these washers to be conditioned and the chemistry. Uh, so you're basically buying a high-strength washer from us all the time. And that's kind of convenient because we found that a lot of engineers don't even like to specify washers. And I think largely because the specs for washers, the ASME specs, DIN specs, and so forth, often leave a lot of leeway for the washer manufacturer. Uh, in other words, it's hard to really determine when you specify ASTM F436 what you're going to get with the washer. Is it going to be 4140? Is it going to be uh, a much more mild, maybe a 1018? Or is it going to be um, something that's uh, you know a, a high alloy but not hardened properly? So the advantage with the high torque washers is that we do conform to the F430 spec but if you ask us for our, for our MTR and you ask us for our conditioning, uh, we can show you exactly how these washers are manufactured and what materials are used. And uh, you don't, you're not relying on some compliance to a very broad spec. You're relying on compliance to the high torque spec, which is going to be a high strength uh, hardened washer. And uh, you, that's not always the case. In fact, it's very hard for an engineer to specify a washer and be guaranteed those, those characteristics. When you specify the high torque washer, you actually are locking those those characteristics in because um, nobody else makes our washer and, and we're able to control them. Uh, with that said, we can make all kinds of different washers for you. Um, we've done them from, from, from all kinds of different materials. We've done them with different coatings. So if you have something custom, please reach out to us. We'll, we'll help you figure out exactly what the best way to approach it is. Uh, we've done galvanizing. We actually stock galvanized washers. We've we stock stainless, we do washers for socketed cap screws, we do special washers for hex bolts, we do washers for, for nuts. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to skin it if you need something special and our stock products don't work for the application. Uh, so moving on, on to the tooling, um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different tooling that's available for these. Like I said, uh, you, know, you can use them with our hydraulics, you can use them with our pneumatics, you can use them with our electric or battery guns. Uh, but just to give you an idea and a flavor of how that works, with the low clearance tool, you can see in this picture here, that's the, the high torque stealth tool. Uh, 
it's real simple. All of our cell tools, we've made them for a long time. They come with two features. You can see that little flower pattern and two holes just adjacent to the hex inside that tool on the link. And they allow us to attach a holding plate. You can see that holding plate, the black piece on the bottom right-hand side there. That actually has a flower pattern or a star pattern in there that allows us to rotationally couple with the washer. So you simply attach that plate to this tool with a, with a little uh, socketed cap screw. And now you can react on the washer without needing to use the, uh, the reaction pad on the back of that tool. Meaning that when you load up a fastener with this tool, you have no risk of actually pinching your finger. It's going to react on the washer and it's going to do it in a safe, clean way. It's going to remove all the side load from the application. So you're going to get an ideally loaded uh, torque fastener. There's no other uh, forces being imparted that you didn't ask for. And then occasionally uh, with, with any of our tools, and, and oftentimes with the stealth tools especially, uh, people like to use them on upside-down applications. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's an outlier, but it does happen where you're working on something and you've got to impart an awful high level of torque, so you have a very heavy tool, and it's upside down. In other words, the nut is hanging upside down. So with these tools, we have a little retainer. You can see on the left-hand side on the bottom there, it's a knob. And what we'll do is we'll just thread that on. It actually bolts to the opposite side of the tool, and we'll thread it onto the bolt. And basically, this will hold your tool up on the fastener so that you can hold it, uh, so you can operate it hands-free and remotely. You literally don't even need to be standing uh, underneath the tool or anywhere near it because it will. It, it's an inverted mechanism. It will. It, it latches onto the bolt that protrudes through the nut, and it's it's permanently affixed until you pay, take it off. So the stealth tools are really good for those inverted applications. Uh, moving on to the battery guns, we talked about the different battery guns that are available. They're listed here again for you. Um, you know, like I said, up to 3,000 foot-pounds, uh, that's the max rating for each of those guns. And then all those guns, you can set the torque for any value you'd like from that max setting all the way down to about 20%, uh, in some cases a little bit less. So uh, you know, on a 1,000 foot-pound gun, you might be able to set it down to 200 foot-pounds. So it's a pretty big range. And you can see the 36-volt lithium-ion battery. This particular tool is a square drive tool. You can't see the square drive on it because it's got a reaction socket, one of the sleeve sockets for the high torque washers. Uh, but you could take that off and use it like a conventional tool with a reaction arm, no problem at all. Um, or you can buy that socket and tighten fasteners without the risk of pinching fingers. Uh, these tools uh, are two speed tools. Uh, you can see on the, on, the, on the bottom side of that tool is a switch that says run down and torque. Uh, that little blue lever there, that allows you to run this thing at very high speeds, uh, 10 times the running speed, and then you can also run them at a much more uh, controlled slow speed where you're going to actually create controlled torque. They've got a lot of great features. They do, uh, you have units set for newton meters and, and, uh, and, and foot pounds uh, and even kilogram meters that you have, um, uh, they'll store data for you. Uh, they uh, essentially um, have a graphical user interface that lets you see the nut turning, what direction it's going. You can set it for different modes, whether you're working with a high torque wash or working with a high torque nut, uh, whether you're working with a conventional reaction arm. Uh, one of the things it does with a conventional reaction arm is it releases the arm. So when you tighten up a conventional nut, the arm has a tendency to wind up and get some torque uh, wrapped up in it, and it gets tight to the application until you back the tool off. It's very typical for all the pneumatic tools. These tools, because they have uh, microprocessors and computers in them, what we're able to do is allow the tool to run backwards as soon as it's done torquing, so it backs off automatically, which is a nice little convenience that you can add when you have a microprocessor uh, operating your tool. Um, these tools uh, also come with torque and angle functionality. Torque and angle functionality is very popular in the automotive industry. It does provide a lot of benefits, allowing you to um, get more precise bolt loadings with open loop torque. Um, see it a lot on engines, but I think it's moving into some structural stuff too. Um, it's in the tool. The tool supports it. You can use it if you want, um, and uh, we're more than willing to help you get that set up, of course. Um, these tools are uh, entirely uh, uh, manufactured in the U.S., uh, and uh, it's, it's our latest line of, uh, of, of large tools. We do have an 18-volt version of this tool also. It's a little bit less expensive. Um, obviously, the battery doesn't last as long. It's a lower featured model. It doesn't have the two speeds. Um, but for the most part, uh, if uh, if your torque applications are greater than a thousand foot pounds, uh, the, this particular thirty six volt gun with the larger battery is what you want to have. Moving on here to show you some application pictures of our equipment being used in some mining applications. Uh, 
This here is just a final drive uh, bolting. Uh, you can see uh, those are uh, um, galvanized bolts, uh, obviously on, uh, on a piece of mining equipment. Um, I know it's not a great picture, but I've got more to show you in the slides. Move on here. Um, but in this picture, you can see in the center there, we actually have a little uh, window where you can see the angle of the socket. So basically, if you look at the OEM hardware on there, they're studs. We essentially put our washers underneath those. Uh, sorry, they're not studs, they're bolts. We put our washer underneath those bolts. And what we do is we tighten those bolts by reacting on that washer. And when you do that, you no longer have to worry about reacting on anything adjacent. In this case, that's a really good thing. Because if you look at that radius on that yellow uh, final drive, there isn't a good place to react. The tool's going to want to walk off there. I mean, maybe you can react on the adjacent fastener, but they're really, really tight uh, together. And that means the side loads are particularly high. Uh, so it doesn't make for an ideal loading when, you're not, when you don't have a good reaction point. And in this case, when you react on the washer, you always have a good reaction place. And not only is it good, it's safe, and it gives you a very, very high quality uh, of, of torque and loading for the fastener. Moving on to some uh, front strut applications, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the diversity and complexity we might run into, uh, you can see in the, in the, in the left-hand picture here, uh, that's actually a, a high torque washer, but it's a little taller in height. Um, we run into some applications where you have counter bores, and the counter bores uh, may be deep enough that we can't get the washer driver down into the counter board to react on the washers. This is a simple way to address that. We just add a little thicker washer on there. And you can see that uh, washer there. Uh, we've got a reaction feature on the outside. Uh, that's that, that same star uh, or flower pattern. And you've got a little bit of thicker uh, window for reaching down into the, into the counter bore so that the, the fastener can react on the counter bore and the driver can react on the fastener without the confines of the counter bore. And then on the back side, obviously, uh, we just put the backup washer on that. That backup washer allows us to remove the need for a backup wrench when we're tightening those bolts. It's a tremendous advantage because normally when you tighten a bolt, and these are pretty big bolts, they're probably on the order of a couple thousand foot-pounds. Uh, you can't just do that with a hand wrench. Um, but when you start to tighten them up, that backup nut is likely to turn. And uh, if it does turn, you're not going to create any load until you stop it. So normally you're going to put a wrench on it. Um, and then that wrench is going to you know, react on something external. And then when you're done, the wrench is going to be kind of stuck there. So you're going to have to try and tap it off on a hammer. Um, all those uh, you know, iterations take time, and they pose risks, safety risks, uh, and quality risks. So um, by putting that backup washer on there, this thing gets so clean and so simple. Uh, there really isn't any good reason uh, to not utilize it if you have an application with multiple nuts or, 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 or a need for a backup wrench. Uh, about the only time you don't need them is in blind holes. Get some more pictures here of uh, final drive applications. Um, again, uh, the same kind of scenario. These are these are just standard height washers, though, uh, not, not the counterboard uh, uh, thickened washers. Um, but it's just a real simple way. I mean, you can see on these ones, these are really tough fasteners to get to. I mean, if you got to put the torque on these, uh, it is very difficult to reach down in there with a tool. And then once you get the tool in there to find a reaction point can be, you know, can be problematic. And uh, oftentimes you'll see people do this in things that, in ways that are almost unsafe just because they really don't have a good place to react. No, there's no better place to react than the washer now that we know about this. And we put these simple washers under there. You can actually address these bolts very easily and very safely. And you can do things without, without you know, a lot of times you'd be in compromised or improvised positions and you have to take more stuff apart just to be able to tighten things up. With these washers, you get a lot of flexibility. I mean, you can do things like put extensions on tools that you couldn't do otherwise because of the side loads. And essentially, you can get these fasteners tightened up and, uh, and oftentimes not even need to take apart the amount of equipment you would have had to take apart otherwise to gain access. So, so we, we're seeing a lot of final drive bolting. People with interest on that, I guess that's an application where uh, you know, there's more maintenance and uh, so they, they see more often. <coughs> In reality, um, anywhere where you're doing bolting work uh, with large tools, it makes sense. But of course, we get to see the opportunities that, um, that are seeing the most amount of maintenance. And final drive is actually one of them. Crushers are another another really interesting area for uh, for for large hydraulic bolting. <coughs> we we've um, we've moved into the uh, 
the crusher industry uh, years ago with some of our other high torque nuts and, and, and uh, reaction free fasteners. Um, but cost was always an issue. And now we offer a solution, a reaction washer solution, that allows you to go after these applications without the need for a very expensive fastening solution. So we can get a tool on there. And in this case, you can actually see this tool is actually being retained upside down. It's being held on there by, by a, a retaining collar. And essentially, you can do a hands-free tightening of these tools without a reaction arm. So you couldn't pinch your finger anyway because there's no reaction arm. But you can stay away from the, because it's hands-free, you can stay away from the hydraulics, stay away from the tool while you're loading it up. It doesn't get any safer than that. And all we've done is add an inexpensive little washer to the, to the stack. Okay, You can see that in this case, this customer already had some washers that they needed in the, in the application. They had enough stud length to work with. So basically, we just took our washer and put it between their washer and the nut. And when you do that, you get all the benefits of a reaction-free system. Um, and at a cost of, you know, I mean, honestly, these washers, if, if these are in the, in the range of two-inch, uh, they're probably only a few dollars each. So, so it's a very, very inexpensive way to gain tremendous benefits. This picture here uh, is uh, haul truck wheel bolting. I mean, there are tons of different haul truck wheel bolting applications that we come across. Um, in this case, I'm actually we don't have our washers on this truck yet. Uh, this is not um, because we don't want them on there, but maybe the OEM hadn't approved it yet. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the some of the some of the hydraulic tools and how they work on there. And you can see in this picture, uh, you know, these are some really difficult areas that people do bolting on. That's a very large tool there. Um, when you got to take a bolt like that and put upwards of 2,000, 3,000 foot-pounds on it, it can be really difficult work and it can be very hard to find a reaction point. Uh, in every case, if you can put our washers on there, this gets so much easier. Uh, the tool gets lighter, you can put an extension on it, and it's really as simple as just designing in a simple washer as a reaction point. Uh, we do run into some scenarios where maybe it's a little bit more difficult because the design doesn't allow the extensions to fit, um, but we're always willing to work with you on that. But we come across, especially on wheels, I mean, scores, if not more, applications where a simple washer would make everybody's life so much easier and so much safer. And yet we're not to the point where, where, where they're installed in a lot of these places at the OEM level. And so um, we're trying to make sure the mining industry understands on the field what they can do with these, but we're also doing everything we can to make sure that the OEMs are aware of the potential so that they can bring this to you in their designs, uh, hopefully making this... Uh, safer right off the factory floor on a, on a first fit basis. Moving on to one more application and then we'll kind of wrap this up. Open it up to some questions. Uh, hopefully you have some. If you submitted them, we'll, we'll get to answering them. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you here is just, just another application. There's obviously you know infinite amount of applications, uh, so we can go on uh, looking at them over and over. But um, this was a unique one. They do, uh, this is uh, cutting edges on dozers. and. Uh, these are, this is a tough bolting application, obviously. Uh, these, are, these are fairly large bolts. They require a significant amount of torque on the orders of uh, 1,000 foot-pounds. And there isn't a great place to react. So, uh, And then the other thing is, you know, they do require maintenance. They're taking these things apart fairly regularly. So what we've managed to do is make this job a lot easier by putting high torque washers on the cutting edges. It's a real simple thing. We use our, uh, put our washer underneath there, put our driver on the tool, and now you no longer need a reaction arm. And on these, I think it's particularly important because the spacing on these cutting edges is very irregular. You know, you don't have a bolt circle or a bolt pattern. So oftentimes, maybe you can find a reaction point on three bolts that are together. But when you get to the last one, there's no bolt next to it to work with. So when you take away the, the concentricity and the, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the ability to have a fastener right next door to work with, uh, the reaction arms can be challenged. And so uh, the washer systems, they really do a great job by preventing the need to find some external feature to react on. And then not only that, I mean, I guess another huge benefit is that if you don't have a reaction arm on these tools, you know, safer for sure, but they're also a lot lighter. Reaction arms are inconvenient, heavy members. They, they, they got to carry a lot of force and they do it in bending. And so they, they, um, they need to be very robust in order to carry all that load. And so by taking them out of the equation, you're, uh, you're really helping yourself uh, by making the tools lighter and making the whole entire application so much simpler. And it's really as easy as just adding a washer. Okay, well that concludes the formal uh, part of this presentation. Uh, we hope you have some questions. Um, we're going to answer all the questions that came in uh, via email. We're going to try to get to some of them if we have some time left here. I, know, I think we're running a little short. 
But I'm going to pass this over and we're going to start trying to feed through a few of your questions and then we'll log off and we'll get back to you by email. Thank you very much for your time and we really look forward to working with you. We hope that uh, you you saw some of this as insightful and that you're quick to uh, show us some of your challenges uh, and and call our people, uh, you know, our, our sales forces. Like I said, over 500 strong, and they really love to come out and help you uh, take advantage of some of this technology. Thank you very much.